first new high court sitting saw an amendment to proceedings with civil and criminal matters brought forward to the first day. Yesterday, eight civil cases were presented and presided over by Judge Wilson Isaac. The gallery was packed with spectators with special interest in the final civil case before the courts, a petition of inquiry into the objection towards names on the Makifu Registry elective roll. The case took much of the day as a cross-section of witnesses were questioned from both sides. Following lengthy discussions and debates on the merits of the case put forward, the judge reserved his decision to be given at a later date. And today the courts continued with criminal cases presented by the new police department. Two high-profile cases were also amongst the cases brought before the courts. However, a number of cases were stood down to allow for the department to call on witnesses to appear before the court. One case involving a public servant facing theft charges has been adjourned and that will be held tomorrow afternoon. In the matter of four people facing assault charges relating to an incident in the village of Hidavake, five charges were laid by the police department that included three counts of actual bodily harm, one count of assault and one count threatening to kill or do bodily harm. This case has been adjourned until the next High Court sitting in November. Other criminal cases saw three people appear on charges of driving a motor vehicle with excess breath alcohol. One man was found guilty and fined $300, his driver's license disqualified for six months and he will also serve six months community work. While another case has been adjourned on the request of his legal counsel to be heard by the local courts, in one case adjourned until the next High Court sitting in November. After much speculation after New Year's Legislative Assembly was sworn into the House and the Premier's announcement of his Cabinet, Minister portfolios have been made official and a majority of the posts are under the leadership of the Premier Tokita Lungi. Within his portfolios, he looks after the Premier's Department, Finance, Customs and Revenue and Government Assets Taxation, Infrastructure Department, Transport, New Public Service Commission, Police and National Security, Immigration and Population, Civil Aviation, New Tourism, Meteorological Services and Climate Change, the Environment Department, Youth and Sports Development, Religion and Taonganiwe. Honorable Pokotoa Sibeli, Education Department, Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Administrative Services, NTDC and the Broadcasting Corporation of Niwe. Portfolios under Honorable Kupa Mangdungia, the Public Works Department, the New Power Corporation, New Post and Telecommunications and Bulk Fuel. And Honorable Joan Tafaha Viliamu, the Health Department, Community Affairs and the Department of Justice, Lands and Survey. Associate Ministers include Billy Talangi and Dalton Tangalangi, who will also be involved with special projects. This week, key stakeholders from the community gathered for a three day workshop at the Millennium Hall to further discuss the needs of the disabled. New is working on the second draft of its national disability policy, and a consultant from the Forum Secretariat has been sent to assist and facilitate the development of this policy by the people of New for the people of New the first discussions on developing a disability policy for Niue began in 2008 and the focus this time round is to develop a more realistic policy that is achievable. We did a draft in 2008. That draft was probably too ambiguous, uh, sorry, too ambitious. Uh, people were excited about it so they put in everything they wanted. Uh, I, I included everything they wanted. Now we have come to look at it now. It's now been streamlined to make it more realistic. So we haven't implemented. We are still consulting, consulting. And we're going to keep on consulting to try and get the best uh, before we finalize it. I emphasize that this policy is, uh, is uh, for the people of Niue, by the people of Niue. It's not, uh, I, I'm just here to, to facilitate the process. They are very, very competent people here, uh, people who have passion, people who have knowledge people who are well-educated in this country, and they are the ones who are driving 
the wordings of this policy. I, I just facilitate. So it's by by the people of Niue for the people of Niue. And uh, we hope to have a second draft that uh, that will be able to, to to be more precise from the one we first grew up in 2008. So we we'll live here with probably a second draft and probably come back at the end of the year to finalize it. Niue, as a member of the Forum Secretariat, is a signatory to a number of agreements and the Pacific Plan. Disability is an issue taken seriously by the Forum Secretariat and governments in the Pacific to acknowledge and recognize the rights of people with disabilities. The policy will give recognition to persons with disabilities in this country. When I'm talking about persons with disabilities, uh, it, it depends on the definition of uh, disability in this country. And the group that is working in there have come up with disability. Uh, disability is something that uh, takes into place people who are disadvantaged by barriers, by attitudes of people uh, uh, that are disadvantaged by these things. And uh, in any way, you have people who are physically disabled, those who are mentally disabled, those who, are, those who have learning disabilities. And then you have people who, who are suffering from probably non-commutable diseases like diabetes now that leads to blindness, amputation, and all these and accidents. So the, all these people with disabilities are covered. Uh, in this, and this this policy gives recognition to the needs of these people for them to to live an equal life as anybody else. It really is addressing their human rights to live in this country. I, I believe with uh, with the commitment shown here and the passion shown with the different ministries represented here, the different persons with disabilities represented here, the community, the, the commitment from uh, the premier and uh, the minister, the secretary to government, the, uh, the director of community development. I think if we have a good, realistic, attainable, achievable policy uh, that is streamlined to, to meet uh, the cultural needs of this country, the people of this country, the number of people in this country, I think we should be able to go a long way with this policy. Community Affairs, as the focal point, believe that this should be a joint effort with involvement from government entities, private sector and non-government organisations working together to ensure that the policy and its objectives are met, ensuring equal opportunities. Discussions and consultations will conclude tomorrow and the aim is to have a second draft by the end of the workshops. Athletics developments continue with the arrival of a coach development advisor from Athletics New Zealand. Michael Sharapov is here this week to facilitate and assist with the development of coaches on the island. This week's practical training sessions have been held with sessions with the new primary school teachers yesterday and today at New High School. We caught up with them during one of their sessions today and spoke to the facilitator about his background and involvement in athletics. I originally come over for a holiday. Uh, my grandmother was in Yuan, so I was, I was keen to come over and, and, and just find some tradition, talk to maybe some family members, that kind of thing. And uh, just through work, uh, I got an email from Tane Rose, and she said, you know, would you like to do some athletics coaching? So it was like, okay, here for a holiday, I might as well do something. So just over the, yesterday, uh, we went to the primary school and, and worked with the primary school teachers on just some athletics programs. And today we've got some of the uh, athletics students and some of the teachers, and we just just going go on the basic technical model for athletics. But what I'm wondering in my role as coach development manager with Athletics New Zealand is we're, we're keen to support the development of new way coaches. So it's good to be here and kind of see what they're working with and, and what kind of resources they need. So I hope to meet with some other officials uh, in Athletics New Way and, and just talk about needs and how Athletics New Zealand can help that. So that's, that's kind of everything. So from observation, uh, where do you see uh, New in terms of athletics development at the moment? Oh, there's some talented kids here. You know, they have got the stuff. So now it's just, have they got the right coaching? And I think that's the big question. And because most coaches are volunteers, it's hard to get coaches into the sport. But, you, you know, New Way's had recent results at Oceana's with some medals. And, and we need to build on that. And that's what I'm wondering from Athletics New Zealand's point of view. Can we help you? Because, you know, you've definitely got the kids there. And can we support the coaches or the parents a little bit more on, on knowledge? Uh, yeah, we see schools as being kind of the main thrust of our delivery. In the schools, you've, you've got the kids in school time. All our programs relate back to the curriculum, so they can
can teach it in the school time against the curriculum, so there are outcomes there. And we see athletics as being kind of a, a health and well-being sport that, you know, if they can learn to run and jump and throw, that can go into other sports like rugby, netball, football, cricket, that kind of thing. So, yeah, we, we see the overall package and we see the primary school and the secondary school delivery structure is very important to us. If we can get in there, I, I think it's called Kapamana, uh, the Tamamana, yeah, the schools program. If we can help support those programs and then get into the curriculum in the school time, yeah, it just makes the program more benefit. And then if those targeted coaches can help support that program, yeah, I think we've got a sustainable program long term. Michael says that discussions with the New Athletic Association and key people on the island, with a scheduled meeting with the Premier to identify ways that Athletics New Zealand can support or offer to work strategically with some of the key decision makers on the island to find a way forward for athletics here on the island. But on a more personal note, Michael also acknowledges his new island links and roots, where he feels that this is also an opportunity to get in touch with the culture and find family, which has been enjoyable. Enjoying myself. Um, I love coaching, so to do a holiday and coaching at the same time is great. Um, you got some cool people. You got some cool people, but they need support, and I think that support needs to come from New Zealand. And hopefully, Athletics New Zealand can can put some resource into this region. But no, I'm having a great time. An open training session will be held for all sports codes tomorrow afternoon, and we'll look at fitness programs for different sports, and also a presentation on nutrition from local facilitators. The New Athletics Association are also thankful for new equipment received, a kids' athletics kit gifted to the association by the International Athletics Association Federation and that will continue and contribute greatly to athletics developments on the island. Those are our news stories that we have for you this evening. We do hope that you'll be able to join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.